Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Finally, again sorry for the delayed video, but as you can see, first month of MBBS is pretty hectic, or at least I made it hectic for myself. Anyways, in today's video, I'll be showing you how I wrote my answers in physics papers. And for that, I have this one paper, one of my pre-boards, I think. Yes. So one of my pre-board paper, I scored decently well in it. It's about 68 on 70. And I thought it'll be nice that I decode this paper and show you how I answer these questions to score near perfect marks. Also, I'll give you a bit of general tips on how to write the paper so that it increases your presentation value. So let's dive right into the video. Well, as you know, according to the new pattern, the first set of questions you receive are MCQ based questions. And in these MCQ based questions, you don't really have to write huge, huge answers. All you have to do is write the correct option. So the, for the first 10 MCQ questions, I just wrote the options. I did all my rough work in a separate rough work column. And this is because it's just a one marker and all they care about is if or not the answer is right. Later, you have other short one word answer one marker questions in which all you have to do is write that specific word because they just need the key point because it's again for a single mark. But if they're asking for a definition or a reasoning type of question, then it becomes important for you to write one or two lines of that definition or one or two lines trying to reason that out. For example, in this question, it says, why are engines easier to start on a warm day? So you have to give a reason for this. And if you can see, I wrote one line and I underlined exactly three words which give you the answer. And it is because resistivity decreases, there is an increase in temperature and there is an easier instantaneous flow of current and that's all they need to know. So do not sit writing paragraphs and paragraphs for a one mark answer. As long as you keep it crisp and short, you're good to go. Now, let us come to this other set of questions, which are derivations. Now, derivations form almost half of your paper and you have to remember these really, really well. Even if you're not really sure about your concepts, even if you do all the derivations properly and go with the format, with the diagrams, you will be able to score decent enough marks. So when it comes to derivations, it's important that you make it look neat, that you follow a format, you at least try to derive it just the way you've been taught in school and you also give the necessary diagrams and calculations along with it. If you see this one derivation here, it's for about two marks and I've written a one page answer for it. It includes the definition of Brewster's law, it includes the diagram needed, it includes the conclusion and the limitations for it. And since I've mentioned all that has to be mentioned, they gave me full marks. Which brings me to my next point. If you look at this question, you can see that I've made a diagram here. This question just asks us to define what electromagnetic waves are, but you realize that this question is being asked for two marks. And you can't really define something for two marks, right? And that is when you have to kind of apply your big brain and think of other things that you can do to justify this answer. And here, I just drew the diagram and explained the diagram and they gave me two marks. So diagrams always help. Whenever you feel that your answer isn't satisfactory enough, try to draw a diagram, try to give an example, try to show a calculation or whatever in physics. Now let's come to three markers slash pi markers, which are basically the long answers. When it comes to three markers and pi markers, they are of several types. For example, numericals. And you have long based long reasoning type questions, short reasoning type questions. You also have questions that ask you to show the functioning of a device, etc, etc. Now, there are a few things that you have to check before and after you solve every numerical. Number one, the units in the answer. Number two, the formulas. So whenever you get a numerical, it's important that you mention each and every formula that you're using, no matter how vague or trivial it might sound. Number three, whenever required, draw a diagram. Number four, the final answer. So what happens in numericals is you tend to forget 
to underline the final answer so any of the middle calculation is assumed to be the last answer and you may lose marks so try and circle or box the final answer now coming to reasoning type questions so most of the five markers include five one marker reasoning type questions which are mostly application based so if you do not know the reason for whatever question they're asking do not hesitate to write any vague reason that you can think of trust me i've done this sometimes i never knew the exact reason why something happened but i do remember some or the other thing related to that chapter i wrote it down and i ended up getting marks you can probably go home and check out the actual reason later but whatever you're thinking just don't leave the answer blank because that really gives a bad impression to the examiner try to write whatever you can no matter how vague it sounds just write something and if you see the average length of 3 and 5 markers i have at least tried to cover two whole pages or two and a half pages or one and a half page so according to the marks you obviously have to increase the length of the answers which gives off a good impression when you write big answers it is also a bit tiring for the examiner so make sure that your answer looks spaced out underlined so that the examiner doesn't feel the pressure to correct such a huge answer and another thing that you need to learn in 5 marker and 3 marker questions is the divide of the question for example you might have a question which is divided into two parts so you should be able to tell which of the part carries more marks and which of the part carries less marks and this only comes through experience so the more and more question papers you solve and get them corrected by your teachers then you'll realize how much of marks does a particular answer carry and you'll be able to write accordingly now the next point is refrain from using short forms so if you can see one of the mistake i made in this paper was using the perpendicular sign instead of writing perpendicular and for that my teacher pointed it out so try to increase the usage of scientific words and try to not use extensive short forms that you use for making notes in class etc my next tip would be rechecking with a fresh mind so what people usually do is they get done with the paper and immediately start checking it so usually when you do that you are in the same state of mind for example if i wrote 2 into 3 is 5 and if i recheck it immediately the next second i would still think it's 5 but if i give myself a break of 5 minutes and recheck it i would obviously realize that 2 into 3 is 6 so it's important to refresh your brain before you start rechecking and when you recheck make sure you go through each and every line make sure you go through each and every numerical uska formula their calculations I know most of you wouldn't have time for doing all of this but whenever you're rechecking at least make sure your numericals are thorough because they are basically free marks. Now finally when we talk about paper presentation if you can see my paper I have tried to underline every single word that I felt is important for the examiner to see. If it's a 3 marker question which is as huge as this then I have tried to underline each and every word then i have tried to underline only those words that the examiner needs to see and because of that it becomes easier for her to correct and it also looks neat and it also gives an impression that you know what you're writing and you know what the important terms are sometimes teachers just look at these important words and give you 5 marks or 3 marks and if you notice something else even in the numericals or in the theory questions i made sure to leave appropriate lines i'm not saying you leave line after each and every sentence I'm just saying that you need to leave enough lines so that it doesn't look crumpled and tacky. And one last and final tip which I personally use, I haven't really heard other people doing it, but this is what I do. So sometimes the paper might get messy when you're solving a question or doing a question that you might not know the answer to, especially in maths and physics. So there was this one question in which I had to apply KVL. So I wasn't sure I'm going to get the answer because as you know the calculations are pretty heavy for such questions and you're not even sure if your answer is going to be right or not. So what I did was initially solve it with pencil and at the end of the paper I rewrote it with pen because once you solve it with pencil you can erase whenever you want and once you rewrite it with pen it look as neat as it is supposed to look. Well those were my tips for writing the physics paper these tips can be used for solving other papers like maths and bio too but this was specifically for physics i really hope you liked this video and it was of some kind of help to you so yes 
thank you so much for actually keeping up with me i'll come back with more videos and vlogs soon